Good morning, everyone. It's Lee Henson, president and founder of Agile Dad, and it's time for today's edition of Daily Stand-Up. So without any further ado, let's get started. Today, I wanted to talk to you about something that was brought to my attention. It was from a student in one of my classes who talked about our company has the most awesome people, but when it comes time to give estimates, they give terrible estimates. And it just brought to mind an experience that I had a number of years ago. Please let me explain. So I was in a home that was new to me and it wasn't a brand new home, but it really needed some paint. It needed some love inside. It had, uh, the previous owner had some colored walls. It was just really funky and it was different. And not only did I not have the time to paint it, but I didn't necessarily have all the tools I needed to reach some of the high vaults. So we ended up contracting with a painting company to do the job. And one of the things that I noticed was that a couple of the painters who came in were super fast and did an amazing job, but there were one or two painters that were very meticulous. And I, while I appreciated them being very meticulous, what I also discovered was that their attention to detail was also the cause for them not doing as good of a job. I know that sounds weird because you'd think someone who's paying really close attention to detail would be doing a better job. When in this case, the people who were paying close attention to detail actually weren't living up to expectations. They were missing spots. They weren't doing things. I don't know if they were just nervous or knew or what the deal was. And I wanna make sure I'm clear here. In comparison, when it comes to people who give estimates, I'm not saying that the people themselves are the problem. I think the culture of where the people come from could be the problem. And I'm not talking about literally where they're from. I'm talking about their previous experience, the tools that they have. You know, let me give you another example using the same painting analogy. I'm sure that that painter was probably being very meticulous because maybe one of his peers or supervisor called him out and said, hey, you know, this isn't up to standard. This isn't a good paint job on a previous thing that he had painted. And when you get called out, that makes you want to be more structured and more meticulous and more exact, more precise with the estimates that you're giving or with the job that you're doing. And I think that sometimes people want to go along and get the job done, but they're not ready to put the effort in to really accelerate and to become better at what they do. So for me, I said, you know, maybe I'll give this person a benefit of the doubt until I discovered that there was another person on the crew who was obviously nervous. They, uh, you could tell that they might've been new, brand new, that they'd never done this before, or that this might be their first job, or maybe they were brand new to the company. And, you know, they can stall a whole paint job just because they are intimidated. Uh, maybe there's more dominant voices. Maybe they're not a good cultural fit for that group. And the same is true when you're giving estimates. You might have one person who is soft-spoken, who maybe doesn't have the same skill set as everyone else. Or maybe you have someone who's new. Or uh, maybe some members feel very strongly that they should only try to do things that fall into their expertise or estimate things that fall only into their niche. And what you find is that people will continue to struggle for as long as you allow them to if you continue down that path. What I'm trying to say is whether it's painting a house or whether it's estimating stories, I think it's important that we each understand and trust each other, that we're going to contribute and do the best that we can, but also that we pull together and that we say, okay, as a cohesive unit, as a team, you know, we have this job to do and let's get it done and rely on those who have expertise to answer the questions, but rely on your own abilities to be able to give solid estimates and don't be, don't feel judged because one time you made a mistake or you're new or there's something that you don't know. It's okay, right? It's totally okay for you to, to be in that situation. You know, the options that company have, the companies have at this point is either A, they need to work through with the teams to solve the problem or B, they need to hire psychologists to come and take care of the quirkiness that's going on there. And what I can tell you is most teams can't afford a qualified psychologist. And this is often a reason why in my scrum master classes, I refer to the scrum master as a doctor. So the scrum master listens to all the symptoms all day long. So symptom, symptom, symptom. So they listen to all the different symptoms. And once they hear all the symptoms, then they have to make the right diagnosis. They have to write a prescription, but here comes the fun part. They give the prescription to the team 
and hope that the team will take the prescription, fill the prescription, and use the prescription as instructed. And if they do, that's how they're going to solve problems. Uh, lots of times people lean on a scrum master as a crutch or an enabler to try to help the team give better estimates or lean on a team lead or lean on someone and say, well, we're just going to estimate everything in John time. And, and that doesn't work, right? We need to make sure when we're giving estimates that we're doing it with our gut instinct, that we're being direct, and that we truly understand what we are trying to get our head around. And if we don't rely on those who do know and trust in them to be able to do what they need to do. The truth is, you know, we need to get past the days where programmers and testers are separate and the, the developers want to estimate things using their points and the testers want to estimate things. And let's add on three points for testing. You know, if you're hearing those things, that's a warning sign. That's a caution sign. That's a red flag. That's something you should be looking for. If people are making completely different assumptions about how done the work needs to be, you know, so this person over here says, you know, I think we need to be this far to be done. And this person over here says, no, 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 we need to accelerate and just really run through this. Um, new team members not being accustomed to the estimation scale that we're using. Maybe in a previous company, something this small would have been a two, but in our company, it is a three. Who knows? But when people are arguing, I call it the Cheerio argument, right? How many Cheerios can you fit in one spoon? You know, it doesn't really matter if you fit two, three, or four in a spoon. In the grand scheme of things, it doesn't matter. It's just we need to make sure we got our scaling correct. And finally, people get burned out through too much estimating. When you got people in a room for hours, you know, we're going to estimate the, the release for the next 90 days. We're going to estimate all the stories. And we only had the good news is we only have 9,641 stories to estimate. Oh my gosh. I don't care how many people you got doing it. That's just arduous and something that should never be done. So, you know, I want to thank Mike Cohn because he put out a nice article, a nice blog post recently regarding this. And it was good for me to see how he approached this because I'm very much in line with what he said. And I think it does make sense. And even though, you know, I don't necessarily use planning poker to solve all my estimation problems, I feel like a rapid assessment of what's going on and keeping people corralled and together is certainly an answer that we're looking for to get more solid estimates. So I hope this helps you on this Tuesday. And as always, we encourage you to visit agiledad.com. We have lots more about this topic and plenty of others that you can learn. And as always, if you have an idea that you want to submit to the Daily Stand-Up Podcast, we'd love to do an episode just on your question. You can submit those to learn more, L-E-A-R-N-M-O-R-E at agiledad.com. As always, we encourage you to stay healthy, stay well, and stay agile.